All right, Yavosai. Good morning. Let us begin. We have a really beautiful daf ahead of us uh, ahead of us today. A new parak emir Hashem as well. I want to begin by thanking our sponsors. I do thank Avram and Shini Kelman for dedicating all the Shirman Drushos this month with the hope and prayer that the month of Ag will be, Av will be a young to filled with joy in the internal base I make those beautiful. Week of Learning sponsors the Ringo and Ram families in the merit of a Rafu Shalema for their granddaughter and niece, Rachel Fine, Rachel Batya, Baslea, and Derek and Lauren Fine for dedicating all the Shi'urim this week in his Chusavar Rafu Shalema for Rachel Batya, Baslea. We hope that in the merit of our Talma Rachel will have a complete and enduring Rafua together with Kol Chole Yisrael. And we'll see with that, let us begin. So really beautiful Gemara ahead of us today. So we are up to, we are up to today's Daphis Kofnun Gimel 153, and we are picking up on Kofnun Basin with Bays 152B. And we are picking up, we are picking up, Amr Le'ahut Siduki Le'Rabi Abol. Three lines are from the bottom. So we'll say, continuing in our discussion regarding what the dead know and what the dead are aware of after they die. It says the Gemara, Amr Le'ahut Siduki, you know, we'll say, often say, you know, that one of the challenges with Dafyomi that we have is the sheer pace, you know, that we have to go. So it's great if you could carve out time for Chazara every day. That, that's incredible. But especially Dapim like this that have such a beautiful Agartha, what I would encourage you is make sure that you mark this off in your Gemara so that as you go through Shas, you remember these Dapim. And I'll tell you where it's especially beautiful. You know, if you bring some of these Gemaras to your Shabbos table and you share them, they're really incredible. They're really incredible. I mean, your, your family might not be all that interested in some of the other sugyas and Shabbos, but everyone loves stories. Everyone loves stories. And the truth is, it's a beautiful way to bring learning home to your, to your mishpacha as well. So just something to keep in mind. So it says, Digimar. So there was a tztuki who said to Rabbi Abba, Amrisu nishmason shal tzadikim genuzos tachas kisya kavit. You said before, he taught us that the neshamas of the tzaddikim are, are stored underneath the kisya cover, are stored underneath HaKadosh Baruch Hu's throne. So the Gemara says, Avotum ubatum ya hecha aske the shmo benegida. So you know, there's the story, there's a story that before, before Shaul went out to war with the Plishtim, this is after really Shaul's unraveling, right? With the whole episode of Davin HaMelech. So, Shaul goes to summon the spirit of Shmuel Hanavi through a necromancer, through an Ovi Yudoni. So we'll say, so the Gemara asks, I don't understand. And it worked, by the way. It, I mean, it didn't really work. Because the Baruch Hu made it look like it worked, but it didn't really work. So the Gemara says, I don't understand. If you tell me that the Neshamas of the Tzadikim ultimately, thank you, are, are underneath the Kis Yaakovet, so how was it that, how was it that, how was it that Halach HaLamaisa the Shaul was able to go ahead and raise the spirit of Shmuel, of Shmuel to which the Gemara says, This is incredible. That was within the first 12 months after Shmuel died. I'll both say, listen to this story. I'll not say this, I'll listen to the statement. For the first 12 months after death, the, is in t- the body is intact, and the Neshama goes back and forth between this world and the next. The Achar Yud Beis Chodesh, in the aftermath of 12 months, Batel, Guf HaGuf Batel, the body disintegrates, Tap of Kofun and Gimel, Benishmasa Ola Ve'ini Oredes, and the Shama ascends and does not descend. So it was a pretty, pretty amazing Gemara. This, by the way, we've seen this theme many times before, already back in Brachas as well, which is this notion, this connection between the body and the soul, that as long as the body is intact, then the Shama in some way is still tethered to this world. It is only once the body ceases to exist, right, the body disintegrates, that the Neshama is totally freed from the confines of this world. Incredible. This is incredible, Gemara's. We'll say from a person's eulogy, you could tell if he is a Ben Olam Haba or not. Now, we'll say, now what does that mean? Right, from a person's eulogy, you could tell if he's going to the world to come. It's a lot of pressure on the speakers. But listen, listen to what Rashi says. In Ben Alam Habahu, Shim Kasher Haya, Hakol Bochin Alav. Because I say, if someone is considered to be truly pious, truly kasher, people cry at a Levaya, Umoridin Demos, they cry, Umusap 
shvachah. So we'll say, so essentially the Gemara saying is like this. If people cry at a levaya, if people cry from the, from the eulogies, from the eulogies, right, ultimately again, then that's a sign that the person is a ben olam haba. Apparently if they don't cry at the eulogies, so he's not a ben olam haba. So the Gemara says, really, is that true? Ini rav l'rav shmuel bar shilas. If rav says rav shmuel bar shilas, let's listen to this. Achim behespeda the hasan kamina. So we'll say, so rav, so rav said to rav shmuel, by the way, when I die, and you deliver my eulogy, you better make it a good one, because I'm going to be there. Right? So, so what he was saying is, so, so I was saying, meaning I'm going to be, which go, I'm, I'm going to be there, but say this goes to what we said before, that the mace is present, right? The mace is present, because the mace is always together with the body until after your day's chodesh. But Rav was saying to Shalom Shilas, please make sure to go in and give a good eulogy, because make, meaning make people cry, Rashi says, Achim be'espeda, dasim kamina. When I die, make sure to give a good eulogy. So Rav was saying to Rav Bashilas, please, when you give a eulogy, give a stirring one that causes people to cry. So as I said, the Shaila is obvious. I don't understand. We just said before that Allah Chalamayis, if a person is an Adam Kasher, a person is what was lived a good life, was a Ben Olam Haba, people will automatically cry. People automatically cry at his loss. So why is it that Rav needs to say to Rosh Hashanah, let's make sure to give a good eulogy to make people cry. Lo kasha, had the muhammulei va'achim, had the muhammulei below achim. We'll say it's very simple. At the end of the day, people only cry if they're going to be moved, if they're going to be moved by the eulogy. So the speaker has to be a good speaker. So if the speaker is a good speaker and the eulogy is moving and people cry, that shows that the person was a ben, is a ben olam haba. If the speaker is a good speaker, but people don't cry, then that might show something a little bit different. Look at Rashi. We'll say you always need someone who is a passionate. Chamumi means, means a, a speaker who's able to, to bring out emotion. She'im b'nei adam nichmarim kol kach al zakin. We'll listen to this, because people generally... Don't cry that much when older people die. Which I will say, again, that, that, that's, that makes sense, right? Because again, remember, everybody dies. Mortality is part of life. And when you see that someone has actually lived to an, an old age, it's sad always to lose someone you love. But those feelings of the bitterness of loss are, are, not, are not the same thing when someone dies young. So in general, when a Zakim dies, people aren't as prone to crying. Umiullah Adam Chassid so now it's becoming a little bit clear what the Gemara is saying. When a person dies at an older age, if people cry at the Hespedim at Levaya, that shows that he's a Ben Olam Haba. If people don't cry, it might show something else. So therefore, again, it's dependent on the speaker. The speaker obviously has to do a good job in delivering a meaningful hespid. But even then, it's not clear if people cry or not. So the Gemara takes the shedding of tears to be an indicator as to the personal piety of the deceased. That's why Rav said to Rav Shilas, listen, when I die, apparently Rav was already older, when I die, make sure to give, a, you know, prepare a good hespid. Hopefully people will cry. I'm really Abayi the Rabbah. Both listen to this. Abayi said to Rabbah, Ki gon mar disano le'kula pum pedisoi, Man achim espeida. So Abai says to Rabbi, Rabbi, what are they going? What are you going to do when you die? Everyone in Pumpadisa hates you. So who's going to go ahead? Also, can you imagine this? Everyone in Pumpadisa hates you. So how are they going to give a good eulogy for you to cause people cry? Now, say, now why does everyone in Pumpadisa hate Rabbi? So look at this. Rashi says, "The son of the kula Pumpadisa, mishun the muchach luhu, the muchach luhu b'mili dishmaya." So we'll listen to this. Because apparently the people in Pompadisa had some serious character flaws. And Rabbah did not pull any punches with them. He gave them Musar. As a result, they disliked him. They disliked him. So Abai says to Rabbah, you know, we're going to have a big problem. When you die, who's going to eulogize you to properly move the inhabitants to tears when they all hate you? So the Gemara says, Amr Lai. So Rabbah responds, it's enough if you and Rabbi Barav Hanan eulogize me, that's enough. Incredible. So, boy, mine, Rabbi Eloza Meirav. So, Eloza asks from Rav the following Shaila. Ezehu ben Olam Haba. I both say, who is a person who is a ben Olam Haba? Right? What does it, who, who is a person who is ben Olam Haba? So, so the Gimara says, Amalei, 
So he quotes over here the Pasuk from Yeshaya, Va'oznicha tishmana davar me'acharecha le'mar, zeha derech l'chu bo. So ki sa'aminu l'chi sasmi le'bo. So listen to this. So the Gemara answers, your ears, your ears will hear that which is being spoken behind you, saying, this is the path that a person should take. So we'll say, so what, what, what does that mean? Look at Rashi for just a moment. This is incredible. Listen to this. When you die, people say, that was a life well lived. And a life worth emulating, that's a Ben Olam Haba. Bose, isn't, isn't that a dramatic idea? A dramatic idea. If after you die, people say, that was a life well lived, and that's a person who I should emulate, that's a Ben Olam Haba. But Shabbos say, is, what, what, what is that? You, you would think, I, I don't know, if I was writing this game out, I would say, who's a Ben Olam Haba? I don't know, there are so many more objective metrics. Right? Similar learns, right? What are the three questions you asked after you die? Right? Kavate itin Torah. Did you set aside time to learn? Nasasa v'nasata be'emuna. Were you honest in your business dealings? Asakta be'peri Did you try to have a family? So both say, so again, I, I don't know, the Gemara seems to give us, if those are the three questions I'm asked when I die, so that Lamais, again, doesn't it make sense that those are the metrics for being in a ben olam haba? But you see something amazing. So what does the Gemara say? No, no, no. Who's a ben olam haba? A person who lived a good life. And I was at the end of the day, when you die, people know if you lived a good life. I mean, people never really know the full story of a person, but people could see the life that you lived. And here's the difference. You see, what the Gemara is saying over here is, the definition of a Ben Olam Haba is different for each of us. Because Yabon Shalom has different expectations for each of us. So what's our ultimate goal in life? Our goal in life is to live a good life to live a good life, and a life that stands on its own. So that when I go ahead and I leave this world, when someone looks from the outside in at my life, because no one knows the real inner workings of my life, a person says, you know what? That person, Plony, he lived a good life. He lived a good life. He lived a good and meaningful life, a life worthy of emulation. If you lead a life that inspires others to live well, then let me say that's a Ben Olam Haba. Such an incredible idea. So it's not an objective metric. Did you learn? Were you honest? Those are personal questions that Baruch asks me. But in terms of who's a Ben Olam Haba, if I, if I inspire others to go ahead and live meaningful lives, to accomplish things, that's a Ben Olam Haba. Quite an incredible Gemara. Rabbi Chanina Omer, Kol Shedas Raboseinu Nochemenu. If your teacher is like you, if your Rebbe likes you, then ultimately, again, that means Rebbe Olam Haba. We'll say, now, what's the Pesha with this? If you look at Rashi, Rashi says, No chemenu daitam no chalem, mimash shon alav veroin bo. So Rebbe say, your parents have to love you unconditionally. Right? And, and, and even, and your children kind of even have to love you unconditionally. Even your spouse has to love you a little bit unconditionally. But your teachers do not. So if your Rebbe likes you, right? Your Rebbe sees you. And ultimately, again, say so he, he, has, he has warm feelings towards you, that's a Ben Olam Haba. Good. So the Gemara goes weiter. So we'll say the Gemara quotes the Pasuk from Kohelas. So literally they walk around the marketplace, the eulogizers. So in the Galil they used to say, do things before your bed. What does that mean? I will say, Asei Dvarim, Rashi says, Live a life that they could speak about while standing in front of your bed. The bed represents the funeral beer. So in the Galil, they used to say, live a life so that people could properly eulogize you. At the end of the day, give people something good to say in their eulogy. B'nai Yehuda Amri, Asid from the Mitascha. In B'nai Yehuda, they would say, live a good life that people could talk positively about you from behind your bed. There's no real machlokis over here. Markias, Markias. We'll say, in the Galil and in Yehuda, they just assumed different eulogizing positions. So apparently in the Galil, they would stand in front of the mace. When eulogizing 
in Yehuda, they would stand in back of the mace when eulogizing. Really incredible. Also, I, I just want to point something out over here. The, the, when the Gemara talks about, I don't want to leave you with the wrong impression. The Gemara is not saying like, like the most important thing in life is that people, you know, you want everybody to give a good eulogy about you. You know, that, that, that's the goal. That you give a good, the idea is that you should live the kind of life that speaks, not speak, that, that stands on its own. That someone sees my life, and, and I don't need a whole Rashi. You know, I'll say, Cloud Godel in life is, if you need Rashi, tell Sister Shonam and Achronim to explain why your life was meaningful and important, there's something missing. What the Gemara is saying over here is live the kind of life that people who know you and people who see you know that you made a difference, that you made a difference, that you did something important, that you actually accomplished something in this world that your time in this world was well spent. People shouldn't need a magnifying glass or a microscope or any type of perushim to see. I'm sure, he, I'm sure he did something good. I'm sure he did something good. Let's see, and again, when the Gemara says, mitoch, mitoch, you, you, you hear a lot, I, I, it's an occupation, I, I, I go to a lot of levayas, and, and it is fascinating to hear what people speak about when they remember a loved one. It's fascinating to see, and sometimes it's heartwarming, and sometimes it's terribly sad. You think, and again, are you calling them as an outsider? Really, like, that's all you remember? That, that's, that's it? That's it? After a whole lifetime, the one thing you remember are matzo balls? Like, like that's, that's it? That's, now again, matzo balls are very important, don't, don't get me wrong, but, but Lamaisa, from a whole thing, from a whole thing, flour and water and chicken soup like that's 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 what this person meant. so again I, so, sometimes of course that represents something much bigger you know the power of a matzo ball is like the glue that can hold a family together so i'm not minimizing the clock of matzo balls of knedloch mamish like it's important but but like i said the gemara saying over here is go ahead and live a life that when somebody gets up to eulogize you they're not searching they're not racking their brain for i'm sure he did something good Sure, he made a difference in some way, but live a kind of life that stands on its own. It's incredible. Tanan, Tanan Hassam, Rabbi Eliezer, we'll say, incredible, incredible Gemara. Shuv yom echa lifnei misa secha. Do tshuva, we'll say, it's incredible, the timing of this Gemara as well. We're, in, we're almost in, we're, well, we are already in Yom Nara. Go ahead and repent one day before you die. So obviously, the Gemara says, Rabbi Eliezer says, repent one day before you die. Shalu tamid es, Rabbi Eliezer, v'chi adon yodea eze yom yomos. Rebbe, how can you say, do a tshuva one day before you die? Does anyone know the day that they're going to die, that they could do tshuva the day before you die? To which Rebbe Eliezer says, exactly. Both say, do tshuva today, lest you die tomorrow. And both say, if I live a life like that, where I do tshuva today, I do tshuva today, lest I die tomorrow. Nimtza kol yomav b'tshuva. Turns out that my entire life is spent in a state of tshuva. Va'af shlom ar b'chach maso. Shlom alach said this in his wisdom. B'chol eis yu b'gadecha levanim v'shaman al roshcha al yachsar. So we'll say literally shlom alach says, let your clothing be white at all times. That clothing white at all times is a metaphor for being in a state of spiritual preparedness. So we'll say this is probably one of the most important yisodos in life. That be, it doesn't mean be ready to die at any moment. That sounds like a little bit morbid. But what it means is a lot of times in life, we just procrastinate. We kick the can down the road. There's no reason to fix the things that I know that are broken today because it's tomorrow. And most of us go through life with the same stuff that's broken. It's been broken for years. It's been broken for decades. I know what it is. I know what the problem is. I even really know what I have to do to fix it. But th there's tomorrow. There's tomorrow. And Shlomo Alech says, don't live life like that. Whatever you have to fix, fix it now. Fix it now. Let your clothing be white. Okay, yes, because you could die at any moment. But I will say, no person doesn't have to be even that heavy. Let me say, I don't know how much time I have in this world. So the last thing I want is when I leave this world to have unfinished business. I don't want unfinished business. I don't want loose ends. Whatever I was supposed to take care of, I want to take care of. Let your clothing be white at any time. I'm Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. Both say such an incredible game. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai said, Moshe Lomelech Shazimin HaSavad of Lusuda. Both say, listen how beautiful this is. This can be compared to a king who invited his servants to a suda. The little couple ends, man. So both say, listen to this. So they got an invitation for a formal dinner with the king. There's only one piece of information missing, which is when. <laughs> when. The date of the dinner. So pick in Shavahan Kishwes Atma Biashua Pesach Besamelech, Amr Klum Chos Lebe Samelech. 
Well, listen to this. So the smart ones went ahead and said, listen, we got to be ready. Because Lamaisa, the king could call us in a moment's notice. And for the king, for him to get together a suda doesn't require any real preparation. So we have to be in a state of preparedness now. So what did they do? They got dressed and they sat at the entrance of the king's palace waiting for the invitation. Tipshin shabahen, holchulamalachton. The foolish ones, they went out to the fields, they did their work. Amar klum yesh suda below Torah. There's plenty of time. The king's not going to call us to show up in five minutes. A suda takes time. He'll call us. We'll have time to come home. I'll change. I'll take off my solid clothing. And then there'll be time. So we'll listen to this immediate. So one day, one day, just king says, okay, come to the palace now. Time for the suda. So the wise ones came in all properly dressed and adorned. And the foolish ones, having no time to change, clean up, or change their garments, come into the palace, all dirty and sullied. The king was so happy to greet the wise people, but he was angry at the foolish ones. Because he said to the foolish ones, said the foolish ones, I told you, I told you there was going to be a suda. So why did you not live? Why did you not prepare yourself? Why did you not maintain a state of preparedness? These who went ahead and prepared themselves, the pechin, come in and enjoy the feast. Those who did not prepare themselves could stand by but cannot partake of the meal. So the Gemara says, the Gemara says, son of the Gemara said, no, no, no. Because Baruch Hu doesn't bother the tipshin to stand around the Suda because then they look like attendants. Ella, elu vi elu yoshvin. Everybody gets a seat at the table. Halalu ochlin, halalu ra'evin. But the pikchin get to eat, whereas the foolish ones, they're hungry. Halalu shosin, halalu tzmein. The pikchin get to drink, and the foolish ones are thirsty. Shinamar. We'll say such an incredible metaphor, such an incredible metaphor that ultimately, again, we'll say we all know that death comes, not in a morbid way, but in a real way. We all leave this world. No one lives forever. And the Chalash Baruch Hu says, there's going to come a time that I'm going to call you to the great Su'uda, the celestial Su'uda. But the only thing I'm not telling you when you're going to get called. So you know you're going to get called. And you know ultimately, again, that you're going to want a seat at the table. So are you living a life that gives you a seat at the table or not? That, that's, that's the fundamental question. And there's no warning necessarily. And there's no preparation. So you have a choice. Live life in a constant state of preparedness. And I both say, preparedness, I just want to point out in this mushal, the pikchin sit by the entranceway of the palace. Now, don't take that to mean inaction or passivity. It's meant to mean readiness. The pikchin are also going out living their lives, but Lamaisa, they keep their clothing clean, right? Because the pikchin, the, the pikach also has to go to work, right? The pikach also has to go into the world, but he also knows that he's got to keep his clothing clean because if he has to show up to the palace in a moment's notice, he needs to be ready. Probably perhaps the most important is sowed in life. Be in a state of preparedness. Not, oh my gosh, I might die next moment, so therefore I better be ready. But Lamaisa, I'm going to be called to the great Suda one day, and I just want to be ready. I want to partake. I want to bask in the glory of HaKadosh Baruch Hu for all eternity when my time here in this world is over. So as such, I want to keep my clothing clean. And if my clothing got dirty, which inevitably it does over the course. You know, we'll say there are two things you could do when your clothing gets dirty. You know, you could, you could strategically position your tie and, you know, just begin to wear it a little bit on the side. You know, if the, if the coffee spills a little bit, you know, maybe as the stain gets bigger, the tie can get a little bit wider as well. Or you could just clean your shirt. Or you could just clean your shirt. So sometimes we think that we save time by just repositioning the tie. But the truth is, the stain is always there. And I have to be consciously aware of the stain and hide the stain and obscure the stain, as opposed to just having the courage to take off the shirt, launder it, launder it, which takes a little bit more effort in the beginning, but then Lamaisa be left with a beautiful clean shirt. If there are stains on my garment of life, now is the time to launder it. Now is the time to address it. 
now is the time to deal with it. Davar Acher, plus another interpretation. What does it mean that your clothing should be clean at all times, or white at all times? Elut Tzitzis. What is that actually quite beautiful? It's a reference to Tzitzis, because Rashi points out Tzitzis are white. Shemi Lovan Habeg, Tzitzis are white. So, Bechol Isu Begadecha Levanim is a reference you should always wear Tzitzis. So, we'll say the idea being, why, why are you focusing on Tzitzis? Because remember, again, part of the goal of Tzitzis is to remind you of the Taryag Mitzvos. To remind you of the 613 Mitzvos. So, therefore, Shalom Asad Bechol Isu Begadecha Levanim, wear your Tzitzis. This way, you're constantly reminded of Taryag Mitzvos. The Shaman Al Rosh Chal Yechsar, and what does it mean that oil shall not cease to be on your head? Elu tefillin. We'll say this ultimately again refers to tefillin. Why does oil refer to tefillin? So Rashi says, shame, shame, mishemen tov. Because as the Pasuk says, that a good name is better than good oil. So we'll say, so tefillin, tefillin in the eyes of Chazal, are ultimately seen to be like the ultimate identifier of, of, of Amni. So like the Pasuk says, v'ra'u kal ames ki shem Hashem The nations of the world will see that the name of God devolves upon you or rests upon you. Where do the nations see that? When they see the tefillin shalrosh. So shem arosh. So we'll say a very beautiful idea. So chol yisri beradecha levanim, wear your tzitzis. Wear your tzitzis. Surround yourself with physical reminders of who you are, of what you are, of ruchnius. V'sham arosh chal yechzar, Project your identity to the nations of the world. Don't be afraid to project who you really are. Keep your oil, keep your tefillin on your head and be proud of your identity as a son of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hadjun Alach, Shoah. Hosei. A whole shas is worth it for a Gemara like that, no? Good, beautiful. But we have more shas. Mishech Shech Badar. So we'll say back to Shabbos. Back to Shabbos. It's a fascinating case. I'm traveling. It's Arab Shabbos. It's Arab Shabbos. And what happens? Shabbos is about to start, and I'm on the road. I'm not home yet. What's the problem? I have my wallet in my pocket. Can't carry my wallet on Shabbos, so what could I do? No sin kisla nachri. If I'm traveling with a Gentile, I can say, hopefully, someone who I, I trust, I can go and I can give him my wallet, listen, do me a favor, just carry my wallet home for me. Carry my wallet home for me. If there's anyone nachri, if there's no Gentile with you, manicho ala chamar, you could put it on a donkey. So, what's this? Assuming you're traveling with a donkey. So, if you're traveling with a nachri, you could ask, explicitly ask, the, no, this is happening before Shabbos, right? So, before Shabbos, I could ask the nachri, can you please carry my wallet home for me? If there's no nachri, but I'm traveling with a donkey, I could put it on my donkey, right? I could put the wallet on my donkey. Once I reach the outer courtyard, now Bosi Rashi understands Chatzachitzona means over here, the outer courtyard of my city. So once I get to a place that is closed in and secure, no tell us Akelim, Hani tell him the Shabbos, I could take, now this is talking about the donkey case. So assuming the donkey is laden with items, I could take the non mukta items off the donkey. We'll say for the mukta items, what I could do is, you see, stuff was normally tied onto a donkey. So for the non mukta items, I could just take them off the donkey. For the mukta items, I could kind of untie the knot that's securing everything to the donkey, and everything just falls down by itself. The idea is that once I've reached a secure area, I'm fine with the items remaining in the courtyard. Says the Gemara, Bosei, this incredible Gemara. My time is Shadi Rabban on the Mesa of Kisi, the Nachri. Bosei, listen to this Gemara. Why did Chazal allow me to go ahead and give my wallet to the Gentile? Look at Rashi. My time is Shadi Rabban on the Mesa of the Nachri. Vahari Ushlucho, the Sena Bishabis. I don't say about Sai. The Nachri becomes my Shaliach to carry the wallet on Shabbos. Well, I'm not allowed, in, the general klal is, whatever you're not allowed to do, you can't ask a Shaliach to do. So if I'm not allowed to carry my wallet, so Lemaisa, again, why am I able to ask the Nachri to do so? Bo said, listen to this incredible Gemara. Kimu Rabbanon, De'in Adam Maimin Atzmo Al Mamono. So we'll say, because Chazal understood, a person will not be able to restrain himself from saving his money. We'll say this is an incredible gemar. Ilo sharisle. If you don't allow him to give his wallet to the to the nachri, asi le asuye dalar ames b'shosaram. He's going to end up carrying it himself. We'll say this is incredible, and this is part of the beauty of Yiddishkeit. Chazal understood human nature, and human nature is human nature is. I'm not leaving my wallet on the side of the road. I'm just, I'm, I'm just not. It's it just, it's just, it's just not going to happen. Meaning, it's too. My credit cards are in there. My license is in there. My money is in. I, 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 what, what am I going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to leave my wallet by the side of the road, and, and who knows what's going to happen. So what's so Chazal is we have a choice. 
So we can be purists. He can be purists and say, no, it's Shabbos, Shabbos. And therefore he can carry your wallet. And we'll say, like most times in life when you're a purist, what happens? What happens? It generally backfires because life, because it's very li- difficult to live life as a purist. Or you can be practical. So you want to be a purist or do you want to be practical? So practical, Chazal said, listen, Amir the Nachri is a Dirabanon, instructing a Gentile to do Malach on Shabbos is a Dirabanon. So therefore, better to relax the Dirabanon in order that the Jew doesn't come to perform a Daraisa. So therefore, Allah Chalamaisa Chazal said, we would rather allow you to explicitly have a Nachri do Malacha for you on Shabbos than have you end up potentially transgressing a Daraisa yourself. Incredible. I will say, it's, it's really, what you also see, I will say, something really amazing. Sometimes halacha demands that I overcome my nature. And sometimes halacha understands that my nature is too powerful to overcome, which is really this fascinating dialectic. It's like, you know, an extreme. So you see, we'll say, where do you see it? So you see it over here by your wallet. Where else do you see it? Like, it's like your fast tar, the war bride, right? So it's fascinating that sometimes in matters of money and morality, Chazal understood that there are things that I could overcome or Ramon Shalom understood, and things that I can't, and things that I can't. So it's really, so when HaKadosh Baruch when Alokha tells me that I have to overcome something, it means that I have the koach to do so. The Haraya, when Chazal or HaKadosh Baruch understood that I can't overcome something, they don't make me do something impossible. So it's really amazing. So here, Chazal understood, we can't ask you to put your wallet by the side of the road. Not going to happen. So therefore, we'd rather have you instruct the Nachri to carry it for you than to end up transgressing. Amar Rava, Davka Kiso. But this Davka applies to your wallet. Aval Metzielo. But we'll say if you find something, we'll say, so let's say, for example, let's say I'm walking on Shabbos with the Nachri. I find a $100 bill on the ground. I say, Nachri, Nachri, do you mind, can you pick that up for me? Can you, can you just pick that up? I can't pick it up. It's Shabbos. This Shabbos great, right? I can't pick it up. But if you could pick up the hundred dollar for me, it's mine because I saw it first. And then I just hold it for me till after Shabbos or bring it to my house. That you're not allowed to do. To which the says, "Pshita, that's obvious." Kiso tenan. It says wallet. I'm gonna put that maybe even applies to a found object. And the only reason it mentions wallet is because wallet is the more common case. Kamash malon no. Both say, but when do we say that you can't instruct the nachri to hold, to hold a, or to carry a lost object, or a found object for you on Shabbos? That's only when you found it on Shabbos. But I will say, if Lamaisa, you found the hundred dollar bill before Shabbos, then what? Kiki say dummy. Then it is like your wallet, and you can ask the Nachri to hold it. So, well, so, this is really quite fascinating. So, here's what I know I can do. So, if Shabbos is coming and I'm on the road, I could ask the Nachri, can you please carry my wallet back home for me? Fine. We'll say, if I find a $100 bill on Shabbos, right? So, that I can't ask the Nachri to go ahead and carry home for me. That's a Metzia. That, no, I have no Shaykhs to that. But if I find a $100 bill five minutes before Shabbos, pick it up and put it in my pocket, then what? Then it becomes Lamaisa like my wallet. It becomes like my wallet. I get, so I say, but what do you see something? But you just found it five minutes ago, right? I'll say again, that, that's, not, that's very different. I would say, you know, a $100 bill that you find five minutes before Shabbos is very different than your wallet. So I say, see something amazing. You see how like, how like the, um, the, the found objects of yesterday become like the necessities of today. Like you see how human nature works. You know, when you go ahead and you find that $100 bill, wow, oh, Mamisha windfall. Once you put it in your pocket, once you put it in your pocket, it's just it's already part of your money. It's already part of I me. Mean, there's, there's no chilik, which which in general is is a fascinating incident to human nature because a lot of times in life, like the miracles of today become the expectations of tomorrow. And one of the most important yesodos in life is to be so careful because so many times we get something and it's incredible and it's amazing. Some type of bracha in life. Okay, and it's exciting. Then the new bracha smell goes away, and it just becomes another expectation. So that's the Chazal are saying. You know, when you, when you see the $100, but wow, hundred the moment you put it on your pocket, it's like you earned it. It's like, it's like of, of, of course it's mine. So you find it on Shabbos, you can't give it to the but five minutes before Shabbos, you put it in your pocket, that you can give to the Nachri. You get the Amri. Both say, others have a different version of this exchange. What happens if one finds an object, can you give that to the Nachri? To transport on Shabbos. Do we say since he found it before Shabbos, it's like his wallet? Or do we say no, no, no? 
The only thing you have a license to give to the Nachi on Erev Shabbos and to carry on Shabbos is something you worked for, your wallet, but something you found, you do not have a license to give to the Nachi, to which the Gemara says, Teku. So we'll say, so apparently, the Gemara doesn't answer. The Gemara leaves off with the Teku by the Metzia question. Good. Any more Nachri? So I'll say, so the Mishnah said, if there's no Nachri, you can put your wallet on your donkey. Time the Enimo Nachri. So the reason you could utilize the donkey is because the Nachri is not with you. Ha Yeshimo Nachri, the Nachri Yavle. But I will say, the Mice, if there is a Nachri, you should give to Nachri. So I will say, this is very interesting. So in other words, if you're traveling with both a Gentile and the donkey, it's clear from the Mishnah that what should you do? What should you do? Give the wallet to the Nachri. The Gemara says, but why? My time, my, why is that? Let's we'll say a very interesting idea, because the donkey, we're assuming the donkey in question over here is my donkey. So I'm, I'm the Jew traveling with my donkey and, and my Gentile acquaintance. So now it's coming close to Shabbos, we're not gonna, I'm not going to get back home. So I could either put the wallet on my donkey or I could give the wallet to the Gentile. So the Mishnah says better to give the wallet to the Gentile. Very simple question, why? Because there's a din of shvis as behema, which means my animals have to rest on Shabbos. The act of putting something on my donkey, my donkey carrying it, is an act of labor for the donkey. So it's better for it's better for me to give to the Gentile than to go ahead and have the donkey carry something. So the Gemara said, I will say just even more than that. Remember again, shvis as behema, having your animals rest on Shabbos is a din daraisa. Instructing a nachri to do malacha is a din dirabanan. So much better to go ahead and deal with the dirabanan than the daraisa. So says the Gemara, uh, uh, So we'll say, what happens if it's a choice between a chamar, a cheresh shota, or a katan? Deaf mute, right? A cheresh, that's a cheresh shota. A shota is, is someone who's insane. Or a katan, or a child. Who should I give it to? A chamar manichle. So we'll say, better to, give it, put it, better to put it on a donkey. The cheresh shota of a katan, yo lo yavle. Not to give to the cheresh shota of a katan. My time, hani adam. Hi, love Adam. Because we'll say on a very simple level, if it's a choice between giving it to a Jew, right, to a person versus the animal, put it on the animal. We'll say what happens again if it's a choice between giving it to a cheresh or a shota. So the Gemara says, l'shota. Better to go ahead and give it to the shota. We'll say now why is that? This is actually very interesting. As much as cheresh and shota are often grouped together, Lemaisa, the cheresh is considered to be what, considered to have what Rashi calls a das kala. There is some level of cognition that's there. Masha'inkain, masha'inkain, the shota is considered to have no das. Considered to have no das. So the Gemara says, shota the katan. What about to a shota or a katan? The shota, you should go ahead and give it to the shota. We'll say same idea because remember again, the cheresh and the, the cheresh and the katan are considered to have compromised das, but there is some das that is there. The shota, on the other hand, is considered to have no das. So therefore, again, when faced with the ability to give it to someone who has some das versus no das, better to give it to the person who has no das. So we'll say, what about if it's a choice between a cheresh and a katan? So we'll say, it's not a kasha. Why? Where's the say? This is the Yitzchak, the Shurm, the Trumas cheresh, Amad days, lo seitzei l'chulam. So I'll say the truma of a cheresh ultimately again does not go to chulam. So as much as a cheresh should not be separating out truma, if he did so, it does not go out to chulam with neishu safek. So I'll say, so you see from here that a cheresh has certainly a higher level of das than a katan. Kiti bailach. I'll leave it to Rabbanon. I'll say, where does the shavit? I'll call it to Rabbanon. This nan, chamisha lo yisromu. There are five people who shouldn't take truma, separate truma. Vim tarmu ain't truma san truma. But if they did take truma, the designation is not effective. Who are the Eluhain? Cheresh, shota, the katan, vatarm shen and shalos. So I'll say, cheresh, shota, the katan. Or someone who tithes that which is not his. Vinachri shetaram es shal yisrala filo birshuso. Ein trumaso truma, and there's even even a, an enochri, right? The gentile who took truma from a Jew's produce, even with the Jew's permission, such a designation is not appropriate. So the Gemara says, according to this opinion, my lecheresh yahivle the katan asi lechlal da. So I'll say, should I give it to the cheresh? Because it's better to give to the cheresh than the katan. Because although the katan is a katan now, but the katan will emir tzashem. Right? Zeh katan gadol yihia. One day the katan will be a gadol, will be a bardas. Oh, dilma le katan yahev le the cheresh asilach lufe be gadol. Or maybe it's better to go in and give it to the cheresh 
Because why? Because ultimately, again, I'm sorry, or better, it's better to give it to the katan, because if you give it to the adult cheresh, you could potentially confuse him with other fully competent adult Jewish males, to which the Gemara says, uh, 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 so some say, say, when it's a choice between the cheresh and a katan, better to give it to the cheresh. Others say better to give to the katan. So I'll say, interestingly enough, that's the tension over here. Who's, who's, who's the better person to give it to, the cheresh or the katan? That's the fundamental shayla. We'll say there's a lot to say on that also, just from a hashkafic perspective, as to who is considered to be a stronger identity, the cheresh or a katan, but we'll have to come back to it. Ain't sham lo nachri velo chamar velo cheresh lo shalto velo katan mai. We'll say, listen to this. So now let's say you go through the list. There's no nachri, there's no chamar, there's no cheresh, there's no shalto, and there's no katan, but there is still me and my wallet, and it's five minutes before Shabbos. So what should I do in that case? So I'll say, listen to this. Amr Rabbi Yitzchak, oda cheres haisa, velo ratzu chachem legalosa. There was one more option, but Chazal did not want to reveal what that option was. My Oda Cheres Haisa, we'll say, so what's the, what's, the, what's the additional option that Chazal didn't want to talk about? Malicho Pachos Pachos Midalit Amis. We'll say, what can you do? Carry the wallet, keep it in your pocket, and just walk less than Dalit Amis at a time. Right? So we'll remember again, the din of Hotsa is only if you go and you carry something Dalit Amis in the Shusarabim. So just walk less than Dalit Amis at a time. So Amai Lo Ratzucham Legalosa. But say, why did Chazal not want to reveal this option? It's obvious. Mishum Kavod Alokim Haster Haster Davar Ukvod Molochim Chakor Davar. Sometimes the honor of God requires you to hide certain things. Vahalcha Mai Kavod Alokim Ika. But say, so what's the honor of God that we're concerned about over here? Dilma Asir La Asuye Dalar Ames Bishos Arabim. But say, it's very understandable. Th- that's like what, what they're describing over here is mamish something you do not want to advertise in public. Why? Because it is so easy to transgress. It's so easy to transgress. You walk an extra half an amma. You're not attentive to every single step. And suddenly you've just violated a malacha daraisa. So I'll say, so again, remember, is that option on the table? Yes, it's there. It's there. But Chazal did not even really like to speak about it all that much because lemaisa, lemaisa, they were concerned it would be abused. Tanya, Rabbi Eliezer, Amr Bobayam, Gachu Sar. But it says, on that day, they piled on the Sar. We'll say, on that day, Rashi points out, it's talking about the day when they went, the Gemara Tassel, when they went into the attic of Hanania ben Chizkia, and they legislated 18 things. Among those 18 things was that if you're stuck with that Anachia, Hamar, Acheri, Shota, Vekatan, that you could carry your wallet less than Dalit Amis at a time. So Allah says, that was a great day. They went ahead and they piled on additional halachas. Rabbi Yeshua ben Rabbi Yeshua Omer, Bobayo Machkusa. That day they leveled out the sa. So Rabbi Yeshua was unhappy. Rabbi Yeshua felt that Lemaisa, Lemaisa, adding on that extra piece actually was detrimental. Tanya, Marshal Rabbi Eliezer, Lamad Rabbi Domer. To what could Rabbi Eliezer say and be compared? What's the Marshal? Lukuba Malia Kishon Mediluin. What's if you have a basket filled with cucumbers and gourds? Adam no sin le socha chardal vi machazakes. Ultimately, again, a person could pour in mustard seed, mustard seed, and the mustard seed preserves the gourds and the cucumbers. So I'll say, so, so putting in that extra gzera of being able to go ahead and walk less than dalaramas at a time, that was good and it was a preservative. Marshal Rabbi Yeshua Domer, Rabbi Yeshua felt that the adding on of this ability to walk less than dalaramas at a time, what does that compare to? La Reva Malaya Dvash, like you have a basket that's filled with honey or a bowl filled with honey. No, in the soccer, in the van goes of him, Akia. Also, what happens if you have a bowl with honey and you drop in there nuts and pomegranates? It causes the honey to spill out. So, Rabbi, Rabbi Yosho was very upset that they released this information about walking less than Dalai Lama. He felt that that was actually going to be detrimental. So, both say, remember, that is the halacha. That is the halacha. Technically speaking, if one walks less than Dalai Lama, in an effort to go out and protect their wallets. So Lamaisa, again, it could work. One, one, one is not in violation. Again, we'll see the halakha in just a bit. But I will say, but again, there's a fascinating machokas on whether or not it was ever appropriate to actually release that information. So the Gemara says, Amr Mar, Eini Mo Nachri Mani Chalachamar. We said before that if there's no Nachri with you, you could put the wallet on a donkey. How could you do that? Valo Mechamer. But I'll say, is that not leading a laden donkey? V'Rachmana Amr Lo Sasek HaMolacha. 
And I've also said Torah, you can't do any malacha. And I've also included in the malacha is that you can't do malacha with your animals. No, no, no. I've also said, listen to this. In order for an animal to be, to, in order for you to be in violation of mechamer, which is leading a laden animal, there has to be an akira and a hanacha, right? An uprooting of the object and the object coming to rest. So the way you could circumvent that is how? Place the object on the animal while the animal is still moving. So therefore, I both say there's no real akira. So the Gemara says, "Bo as hagabai after the lokaim al hashdin by mul hata glolim, but veika veika akira vanacha." But at some point, then the animal is going to stop, right, to relieve itself. And if that's the case, when the animal stops and then starts again, there's an akira and a hanacha. Kishim aleches manicho ala kishiomedes no telas himena. I both say, "What do you do when the animal's moving? You keep the wallet on it, but the moment you see the animal is going to stop." You take the you take the wallet off it because you must remember again the taking the wallet off the animal is okay as long as you're not walking daladamas. If that's the case, then lamaisa, why do you need the donkey to do this? Your friend could do it for you also. But say anything that if you were to do it yourself. You would be chayiv achatos, i.e., a biblical transgression. Bechavero patro avo aser. Your friend can't do it mid rabbanon. Chol shechavero patro avo aser. But anything I've said that is patro avo aser, aser mid rabbanon for your friend. Bechamoro muter lechatchila. For your chamor, right? You could do it lechatchila. Therefore, I will say again, if I were to place a wallet on my friend while he was walking and remove it ultimately again before he were to stop, that would be an iser mid rabbanon. So. Therefore, because this is the by a person, by a donkey, it's mutter lechatchila. So therefore, I will say, what the Gemara is suggesting over here is as follows. That again, obviously the best thing to do is the nachri. If you can't do it by the nachri, then put it on the chamar. But even the chamar, you have, if it's your chamar, you have to be careful with leading a laden animal on Shabbos. In which case, what you could do is leave it on the animal while the animal is, put it on the animal while the animal is moving and keep it there while the animal is moving. But the moment ultimately, again, that... The animal is about to stop moving. You take that off. You take that off. All right, the boss, you know what? We'll stop over here for today. We'll pick up in Mirat Hashem with Amrav Adabar Abba. Mirat Hashem tomorrow. Shkach HaVosai.